Did your dad ever tell you about 1970, 71, 72, 73, 74? I mean, if, if he stayed in the business, that's, tell, that's telling you something. Absolutely. Well, Pop started in the business at E.F. Hutton back in 1953 and really didn't stop investing until a few years before he passed. So he was around. He obviously reminded the kids about how times were tough, uh, especially in the 1970s with higher inflation, et cetera. So what's interesting, Joe, is 1970, we keep mentioning, but the top 10 first halves that declined the most since World War II Eight of those were uh, third were the uh, midterm election years. So what we're experiencing this year is basically the same as 80 percent of the worst 10 since World War II. Weird. Uh, I, my, I, that sounds like a coincidence, not necessarily, uh, but maybe it is related, though. Uh, do you think by the end of this year we're, we, we're making similar comparisons, Sam? In other words, what's your outlook for the second half? J just as bad, flat? Could we bounce? Well, I think what we have is it's a tale of two quarters. I think that the third quarter is likely to see a continuation of the market decline. You know, looking at the uh, the worst 10 since World War II uh, first half performances, we ended up uh, declining about 2 percent or so in the third quarter. So the pattern continued. But most times we actually saw a nice improvement in 80 percent of the observations. We saw a gain in the fourth quarter of 4.4 percent. So actually, you know, what you're showing is data going back, I believe, to 1929. Uh, but looking at data that I think is more relevant back to World War II, uh, yeah, it does show continued softness in Q3. But uh, as what typically happens following midterm elections, we see a nice bump in the fourth quarter of this year that carries into at least the first half of next year. We keep talking about it, it, the how long this, this inflation um, spell is likely to last. And it may, transitory, that, that was a bad word. Should have been retired. Uh, it, it's lasted longer than people thought, but I, I'm still not convinced it becomes like a secular wage price spiral that it, that it ends up with stock prices like 1974 or, or you know years after that. Are you convinced that that we're in a that we need something really radical to deal with what's out of the uh, bag already to get it back in the bag to get inflation back in the bag? Do we need really austere? draconian measures from both fiscal and monetary authority? I think, uh, Joe, I think history does warn us that the Fed really did wait too long to start battling inflation. Uh, when you look back in time, any time that we had a year-on-year -year percent change in headline CPI above 6.5%, uh, that was five times since World War II. All five times we had a bear market and a recession. The bear markets lasted longer and deeper than those without recession. So bear markets averaged about um, 15 months with a 35 percent decline. That's still a garden variety bear market that we get back from um, in 14 months and that we actually establish a new bull market only three months later. So I, I think we could end the year at around 4,200 if we bottom around 3,500 in Q3 of this year. And then remember that bull markets tend to see a surge of 40 percent for the S&P 12 months after bear market bottoms. All right, uh, Sam, we'll, uh, we'll check back with you. It's a tough time to be in, in your business, I, I guess. Have you, have you made any purchases in the last month? Yes, I have. Um, you know, you always try to uh, look for good opportunities, um, you know, based on the fact that I remember the 1970s. I'm focusing more on great income opportunities. I'm thinking more like a landlord than I am a trader, saying, give me those uh, companies that pay a nice annual rent, uh, that have a good track record of paying rents, and don't mind having their rent increased. So that's what I'm looking for. Right.